Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. It has been yet another explosive day. Day 14 in the Casey Anthony trial. The jury saw photos of Kaylee's remains and they heard riveting testimony from her brother Lee who was recalled to the stand this morning. In a conversation with Casey in August of 2008, Casey supposedly told Lee that Zanny the Nanny, who, by the way, my little theory is is in fact just Xanax, but that, that's put that aside for a second. Zanny the Nanny forcibly took Kaylee from her. Take a look at this. During that meeting, Zanny held Casey down and uh, told her that she was taking uh, Kaylee from her. From what I recall, she was um, held like on her wrists. She was held down. They were both um, supposedly sitting on like a park bench or something like that, and then she was um, held down. What did your sister tell you the reason for Kaylee being taken was? Uh, in Zanny's opinion, Casey was not being a good mother um, to Kaylee or wouldn't be a good mother for Kaylee. And um, she was taking her, taking Kaylee from her to teach her a lesson. This outrageous lying is one of the aspects of the case that prevent me from looking away. When I heard that testimony, I don't know about you, but I actually laughed out loud. I mean, based on what we've heard already, the crazy lies after lies, that now just another one that's it's becoming comical. All right, but unfortunately, there's no joke. Not only is there someone's life hanging in the balance, there was somebody's life that we've got to keep mind. I keep reminding everyone. This little girl is here. We're here to serve justice. And I know Mark, who's here with me, to discuss these revelations. He's, we have both a former member of the Anthony defense team, Linda Ken Kenny Bodden, who's here with me. And also, I'm welcoming back criminal defense attorney Mark Eiglarsh. And Mark, of course, I mentioned justice and truth. And I know that's not... not I keep saying I, it's I, not I, important. I, well, it's not, it may be important to you, but it's not the... Not the discipline that we're focused on here. It is about proven or not proven. Okay. Those should be the two entries on the verdict form. That's all I'm saying. All right. What do you make of Lee's testimony? More of the same with a twist. In other words, clearly they know that she's void of credibility. I would say that she is to credibility what Carrot Top is to comedy. You know, it's just, it's just, it's not there. It's just not Carrot there at all. my friend, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> no, no offense to him. But, um, you know, the twist is now it's your own flesh and blood. You not only lie, but you give incredible detail about this whole story with yeah. Zanny, and that will almost ensure that if she ever takes the witness stand, it's just not a good idea. If she ever decides to do so that. More of these lies make it, makes it less likely that she should take the witness stand. I agree. All right, interesting. Okay. Now, Lee said Casey told him also that Nanny, that Zanny the Nanny would contact Casey through her MySpace page. She actually had a, she had a uh, specific password set up. It was Timer 55 and would tell her to meet at various locations. And so she had this elaborate story. Casey, of course, said she never followed up, and that's why she couldn't see the child. Casey also told Lee that this Timer 55, this, this password she had, Timer 55, referred to how many days it would be, the 55, how many days it would be until Casey saw Kaylee again. Listen to this. It's bizarre. Her explanation was that from the date Kaylee was taken from her until her um, until Kaylee's birthday on August 9th, that there were 55 um, calendar days within that period of time, and it was her understanding that, or maybe her hope or belief that she was going to get her back on that day. Um, but that's all she really had to share with me. All right. So day one would be June 16th. Correct. Day 55 would be August 9th. Correct. Linda, you were part of the defense team at one point. I mean, that's crazy stuff, right? Well, but, but again, it shows a psychology of her. I mean, everyone is making her out to be like, like a major criminal. Obviously, these are lies that anyone could tell. Her family could tell they're lies. Everyone should have known that. It's clear she was lying. So why is she lying, Dr. Drew? What is in her background that makes her lie like this? Because remember, up until this date, she was still making things up, but everyone said she was a good mother. So what happened? It doesn't advance us as to how actually the child died, and that's what we're here to find out, isn't it? 
Well, it is what we're here to find out. But as long as you're asking me the question, you know, what makes somebody lie? I mean, commonly, what makes people lie is some sort of severe character disturbance, which either can have a genetic component to it or severe, severe, severe trauma. And supposedly, and we really haven't heard about severe trauma yet.